Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Mother's Day service at the Living Word Fellowship. <clears throat> We're going to start off with uh, prayer and come into a time of worship. And then we're going to have a testimony from Peter Henniger. So I'd like to read this morning a portion of scripture. This is from the um, Passion Translation. And I'm going to read from Proverbs 31. Um, it's sometimes called the... Um, perfect wife or mother and let's see I'm going to start at um, verse 10 who could ever find a wife like this she's a woman of strength and mighty valor she's full of wealth and wisdom the price paid for her was greater than many jewels her husband has entrusted her his heart to her, for she brings him the rich spoils of victory. All throughout her life, she brings him what is good and not evil. She searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. She delights in the work of her hands. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. She's like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. Even in the night season, she arises and sets food on the table for hungry ones in her house and for others. She sets her heart upon a nation and takes it as her own, carrying it within her. She labors there to plant the living vines. She wraps herself in strength might and power in all her works. She tastes and experience a better substance, and her shining light will not be extinguished, no matter how dark the night. She stretches out her hands to help the needy, and she lays hold of the wheels of government. She is known for her extravagant generosity to the poor, for she always reaches out her hands to those in need. She is not afraid of tribulation. For all her household is covered in the dual garments of righteousness and grace. Her clothing is beautifully knit together, a purple gown of exquisite linen. Her husband is famous and admired by all, sitting as the venerable judge of his people. Even her works of righteousness she does for the benefit of her enemies. Bold power and glorious majesty are wrapped around her as she laughs with joy over the latter days. Her teachings are filled with wisdom and kindness as loving instruction pours from her lips. She watches over the ways of her household and meets every need they have. Her sons and daughters arise in one accord to extol her virtues, and her husband arises to speak of her in glowing terms. There are many valiant and noble ones, but you have ascended above them all. Charm can be misleading, and beauty is vain, and so quickly fades, but this virtuous woman lives in the wonder, awe, and fear of the Lord. She will be praised throughout eternity. So go ahead and give her the credit that is due, for she has become a radiant woman, and all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateways of every city. Amen. Well, we're thankful for our mothers. We wouldn't be here without them. So let us pray. Lord, we come to you this morning thankful for mothers. We know that 
Some of us don't have them any longer, but we thank you, Lord, for the influence that they've had on our lives, for the blessing that they were to our siblings, our fathers. We just praise you, Lord, for all that they have done. And we pray, Lord, uh, for the mothers that are here, that they would continue to be a blessing to their children, to their grandchildren, even their great-grandchildren. We know, Lord, that you have set mothers in a, a position of authority uh, and a desire to see their children know you, follow you, and to be blessed. So we bless mothers right now in Jesus' name. Lord, pray your blessings upon the praise and worship as we enter that time right now in your holy name. Amen. Okay, we're here again. Another week has gone by. Just flying by, which is kind of good in a way, because it means one more week before we might get back to normal. We can hope and pray. We're just looking for the day when they say we can have 10 or 20 people again in groups instead of just five. Anyway, we're having a kind of a rainy day today, which is really a blessing from the Lord. We desperately need the rain, and we are grateful for that. So uh, we've got uh, David here with us today, and Timothy Henniker, and uh, he's over off screen there. So we're going to worship the Lord and lift up his name today because he's worthy to be praised. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will
every knee shall bow, every tongue confess.
are with us always, even till the end of the age, your word says. Thank you for your love, Lord. 
We love you, Lord. We worship you today, for you're the worthy one. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. who are struggling right now. Yes. That they would sense your presence, Lord, in the middle of this storm. Mm. Jesus.
Lord, we are grateful that we can depend upon you, that you are worthy of our trust, and you carry us through the storms. You are with us always. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. It's lovely to see you today on this Sunday morning. My name is Peter Henniger, and I am a deacon here at the Living Word Fellowship. I have been a member since uh, I was 16, which was probably back in 1984. I became born again, and uh, two days later at a convention in uh, Moncton, I was uh, led to the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And I would just like to take this time to share my testimony, just to uh, reveal what God has done in my life and to come before you and to share and to be a witness. And I would like to uh, start uh, with a scripture reading from Psalms 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generation. And as I stated, I, was, I accepted Christ into my life at the age of 16 at uh, Circus Square Ranch in 1984. And as I confessed my sins and became aware of who Christ was, I started to understand a little bit of who I was. And in, at the age of 16, you're not really always mature about who you are. You're not, you don't really have that deep understanding because you're just a baby Christian. You're, you're taking little baby steps. You're, you're not, uh, for some, it, it is a little easier. For some, it's, it's a lot harder road. And uh, after I became born again, I went through uh, trials of tribulation. I went through uh, sexual abuse for about a couple of years uh, through a relative and found it very hard to overcome. And I was very frustrated with myself as a, as a new Christian, I was very confused very hurt, wasn't sure about why this was happening to me and why, why, why I was allowing this to take place in my life. And this happened for a couple of years and thank God that I finally stepped out of it. I was able to get away from the person and I was able to move out of the house and go on to my own and to uh, grow do a little bit of growing up, I guess, and to uh, experience. I got into drinking at that time and uh, started to have a, a taste for alcohol. And to the point, and then I uh, was working with my uh, dad at the time at the tractor dealership that he had owned at the, at the time. And was going to church, but wasn't really walking the way that God wanted me to walk in him. And so I, a lot of hard knocks of, in life and uh, not understanding again, like who I was and, and what the, uh, my capacity was as a Christian, and as a believer. And lo and behold, I met a, a woman who eventually became my loving wife and we have been married now 29 years, and uh, we have three children. Uh, all are growing up. 
The youngest is 22 and the oldest is 28 and our middle child is 23. And we have our first grandchild and we are so blessed to be able to see our first grandchild being born and being be able to spend time with her. And it is only through the grace of God. It is only through what he is doing and what we allow him to do in us. And during our first years of marriage, we're very rough. We were still trying to sort things out. And we had our first child, uh, young age. We were probably 22, 21. And working on, I started working on farm uh, yards and doing farm work for six years off and on through the season. So money was tight at times and uh, we try not to get our, we're trying our, our hardest, try not to get ourselves in debt, but we allowed that sin to take part of our life. And uh, so we ended up getting in ourselves in financial debt at times and took probably almost 10 years by the time we finally bailed ourselves out of that and finally put a stop to it. And in that meantime, we were growing slowly in the Lord. We were still going to church, but we still weren't where we should have been. And from what I've learned now, being the age of 52, uh, God gives us this time to chance to grow and to build a character and to really come to understand who he is. And, and part of that is that we have to surrender. Uh, I was working uh, in a plant in the Hans County area and my wife and I at that time in our first job, we all moved to the town that we are from in Hansport. And we got onto a, a big corporation job there and the money was really good. And then by that time we had our, our son and then following year we had our daughter. And for the first five years that I worked in, in, in the, at the plant, it was really good. Uh, I was still drinking off and on and probably not as much as what I did towards the end. And I fell into pornography. Uh, it's always kind of been around my life off and on at times. I was introduced to it when I was at the age of 12. Uh, and from that on, it corrupted my life uh, to the point where you lust after things and you get to a point where you get so consumed by the pornography sin that it really corrupts your life. It corrupted my way of thinking. It caused me to stumble and fall dramatically to the point where I became uh, not a complete alcoholic, but to the point where I was drinking a bottle on my days off, at least one or two, and then getting involved in smoking. And at, towards the end, uh, before my healing, back in 2011-12, I was uh, smoking dope at the, at the end of 2012. And the pornography got to a point where I would watch it at home at any spare moment that I had, and I would be sneaky about it behind my wife's back, which was hurtful to her because eventually she found out. And it caused a lot of grief, it caused a lot of anger, it caused a lot of frustration uh, because our children growing up at that time were older teenagers and once they saw what dad was doing it was very traumatic for them and i hope that uh, and pray that one day that they will find christ and they will be able to 
forgive me for allowing that sin and that corruption to come into our family. And it's been uh, a long road. It's been a hard road. It has not been easy. Uh, when our last child was born, uh, she was born with a heart difficult. And she almost died. And uh, that took quite a shot to the head for me to really understand who Christ was. And it was only by God's grace and his mercy and that she survived. She is now 22 years of age and thriving. She's uh, finishing her fourth year at university. And we can, we are so happy to see her accomplish this in her life. And in 2016, uh, I was unemployed. The, the plant had shut down in 2012. And from 2012 to 2016, it, I worked off and on doing uh, small jobs and low pay labor jobs. And most of it was either night shift or afternoon shift work. Uh, I finally came to a point in my life, my wife was to the point where, you know, our marriage was basically in the toilet and, and uh, we were fighting, we weren't happy. Uh, there were times that, that we would argue so much that I would run out the door and just, I couldn't deal with myself. I, there were times that when I worked down at the mill and looking at pornography and knowing that I was a Christian and trying to beat this on my own, which I couldn't because I was too selfish, too, too, pride, too prideful of myself to let go of that sin, to let go of that, that pain that was being a constant conflict of our marriage. And there were points of times at night when I would uh, look at pornography, I would beat myself up so to the point where uh, thoughts of suicide would come into my mind and I would uh, stand on the wharf, which would had a, at low tide had a, a, a 75 foot drop to the, to the floor bed. And I would stand on that at times and, and just being so hurt and so full of much of, much of pain and torment. And Satan really had quite a heyday with me and trying to go to church all this time and, and trying to heal and trying to do it on my own sort of thing and, and not really getting there anywhere with it because I would go through certain battles at time and I would, you know, go for three, four months without looking at it and then crash and then, you know, get back into it again. And in 2016, I finally basically hit the wall. Uh, it was a point where my wife and I were, again, we were, you know, arguing, fighting. She found out about looking on through on the computer and finding all the history of what I had looked at and stuff and her feeling very angry and uh, not trusting me. And I would just say to you as believers, if you think you can just look at pictures off and on and think that it's okay, you're only lying to yourself. Uh, pornography and lust is, is a, a major corruption of, of sin, and especially in a Christian life where if you don't really truly understand who you are, who your authority is in Christ, it can overrun you and, and it's, uh, it's not a healthy environment. So in 2016, I uh, was introduced to Jerry Bizanson, who was a Christian counselor and a pastor. And we started with just basic prayer. And then on one of our next sessions, we started with something deeper in deliverance and renouncing and casting out that demonic sin, that lust, uh, the alcohol, the drugs, 
the tobacco. After about three or four sessions of just deep uh, deliverance and healing, I was able to be set free and to really know what it means to be one of God's sons and to experience a right relationship with Christ. And because of committing myself to God's word and to his understanding and walking my faith on the highway that, uh, that God sets before us. And when we do walk that highway, yes, there are potholes that we will stumble in. But if we really ground ourselves into God's word, and I mean really ground ourselves, not just once a week, not on Sunday, do it two, three times during the day, because that is the only way you will know who you are in your faith and to take the time to understand God's word. Take the time to read it, to digest it, to make it part of your everyday life and to make sure that your heart is pure, that your soul and your spirit are aligned. And as you walk and, and talk with God and to be an example to your community, be example to your children so they can see the improvements and hopefully that they do. And in the last uh, two years, God has really opened up the door because I've surrendered myself completely unto him. Everything that I have is because of Christ. Our home, our vehicles, the clothes that we wear, the money in our account, it's all because of God. It all belongs to him. And we have to learn that lesson. The hard way at times, we have to come completely to surrendering to him to make ourselves available so that our heart and our mind is, are lined up with him. And uh, being last year, I was asked to join as a deacon here at the Living Word Fellowship. And it has, nothing, it has been a, an awesome, tremendous uh, chance to grow in leadership. And the year previous, I was asked then to join in the ministry and looking forward to the excitement that God has uh, lined up for me. And I know that through walking with him and trusting him, and being a servant to the Most High God. And if you're a Christian today watching us, examine your heart. Find out who you are. Who, who, who are you as a, as a Christian, as a son or daughter in Christ? Take the time to examine yourself. And if you can't answer the question, about who you are. Find out who you are. Look in God's word. Ask people to pray with you. Ask for healing. Ask for deliverance. Go to a church that believes in the fivefold ministry. Find a Christian brother and sister that can hold you accountable as you walk out the things of your life. And I would like to read just one more verse. And this is uh, Jesus talking in John 6, uh, verse 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the, do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him 
who sent me that I shall lose none of all that that has given me, but raise them up at the last days. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I want to thank you for watching and listening. And again, I challenge you as a believer to examine yourself daily. Always ask God to remove your sins from your life that if you feel that you have sinned, that you can repent and to be healed and to ask God to move in you in a special way. Have a blessed day and God bless. I want to thank Peter for sharing his testimony this morning. I'm always reminded of Revelation 12, verse 11, that says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. People can argue theology, but they can't argue your testimony. It's a powerful thing of what the Lord has done in your life. I want to close this morning in prayer. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in Peter's life, what you've done in each one of our lives, and that you would help us to be bold in speaking forth your word to a dying world, that we can speak forth our testimony. We can share it with those that don't know you. We pray a blessing upon each one that has seen this video this morning, that they would be encouraged and built up in your holy name. Amen.